Hello friends, this is Mike Ader and this is the video that wasn't supposed to be made. When I bought my Triumph Stag, I was told that the motor purred like a kitten and had a lovely burble. And I did actually hear the motor run and it did purr like a kitten and it did have a lovely burble. And so I assumed I had a car that was not going to need any engine work whatsoever. A month or two later, I made the $8,000 bad decision to run a compression check, just in case. And lo and behold, I had 135 pounds compression on seven cylinders, and on the eighth cylinder, I had zero. That necessitated the removal of the engine and an entire engine overhaul. By this time, I had read enough about the Triumph Stag that I knew the issues that were there, and I was somewhat relieved to know that I was going to be addressing those things uh, that obviously needed to be addressed. So having the engine out, I took the block in and had it uh, blasted and cleaned and magnafluxed and decked and bored 30 over. The pistons that I took out were 20 over. I took the heads to another place and had them glass beaded and checked for true and the valves were all ground and re-shimmed and reset up. And I was able to find neoprene valve cover gaskets, which I thought were an improvement. During that time, the crankshaft was somewhere else uh, being repaired because a thrust washer had actually worn into one spot on the crankshaft, so that was repaired. The crankshaft was reground 30 over, balanced, and then nitrate hardened. Rimmers had a good day since I ordered about $400 worth of seals and gaskets and new pistons and um, rings. I ordered the top-of-the-line German timing chains along with the tensioners and the hardware for those. Uh, all new ba main bearings, all new rod bearings, uh, new head bolts, new head bolt studs. Uh, funny thing, my heads took me a day to get off of the block and then it took me two days to get the broken studs out of the block. Uh, so we got all of that replaced. While I had it apart, I went ahead and um, glass beaded and powder coated the valve covers, the intake manifold, the intake elbows, uh, the dash pots from the carburetors, the oil pan was powder coated, the transmission pan was powder coated, the dipstick and a number of brackets uh, were all done at the sa same time and uh, everything else was painted. Uh, reassembled, I stripped everything out of the uh, engine bay, cleaned, sealed and painted it added a new firewall pad and eventually put the motor back in. It ran and uh, sounds good and um, it took me probably two months of fussing uh, with the Stromberg 175 carburetors which I knew nothing about. I know very much about now and um, it does now once again purr like a kitten and it does have a nice burble with the stainless steel exhaust system. As it turned out the only problem with the compressionless cylinder was the accumulation of gunk in the valve guides had actually gotten strong enough on one valve. The resistance was enough to uh, overcome the pressure of the spring and not allow the valve to close completely. While I was in the engine bay, I took out the radiator, took it in and had it steam cleaned and sealed and painted. I also added a header tank to the coolant system sourced from a late model Jaguar that included a sensor for a low coolant warning light. And because this was originally an AC car, it had two old 10 inch fans in it, which I took out and replaced with a single 14 inch thermostatically controlled electric fan. I replaced the motor mounts, had the exhaust manifolds heat coated, uh, put in a new high torque mini starter. Um, I had the two fuel tank blasted, cleaned, resealed, and painted. I installed a new fuel filter and a new sending unit for the fuel gauge uh, on the dashboard. And even though the fuel pump was functioning, um, I found out they are notoriously unreliable, so I put in a new fuel pump made by Facet and um, it is an all electronic unit with no diaphragms and um, as bulletproof as they come. 
I uh, rebuilt the wiper motor and I added a battery cutoff switch. The end.